how to create a neat line map exhibit related to your items and collections uh, in Omika. So um, why you might want to do this, uh, a lot of the information that you're collecting may have uh, reference to a specific geographic area. Uh, and a user might be interested in sort of looking uh, on a map at where these things that you're looking at are happening. So if there's a reference to a specific place where a crime occurred um, or something like that, uh, this might be something really interesting for you. Uh, or if there's a specific spot on campus where something is happening, uh, maps can be a really nice way of presenting the information for users uh, to sort of navigate through. So to do that, I'm going to click on Neat Line here down at the bottom and I'm going to create a, a new exhibit. Now this is not the same as the exhibits that you saw before. This is a neat line exhibit, so it's slightly different. Um, the first step is just filling some basic information about uh, what you're talking about. So I'm going to be looking at historic Walkerville in this example. So I'm going to put that in, and you can see it already fills that out uh, as the URL for me. And I'm going to say this is walking through Walkerville. So clever. Um, so a brief description of what you're talking about. You probably want to give a little bit more than I did there. Uh, widgets. So waypoints, I'm definitely going to want because what that does is allow you to draw and identify regions on the map that you're interested in identifying for users and talking about. Uh, similarly, timeline um, allows you to add a timeline to your map so that you can scroll through when things might be happening. Uh, I'm going to add that just so that you see it, but uh, this is uh, maybe a little more complex. I'm going to use OpenStreetMap. Uh, all of these options just provide you with different map styles for people to look at that you can swap between. So I'll, I'll pick a couple of them just so that you see. Um, but OpenStreetMap is probably your best bet for detailed information. And I'll use that as the default. The rest you can sort of leave as it is and then save your exhibit. Okay. So if you want to go back and edit those, you can go to Exhibit Settings at any time to do that. But if you want to start adding content to your new map, uh, you click on the title here, so where it says Walkerville. And that is going to pull up this map for me. Now, the first problem you're going to see is that it is opening up the map to somewhere in Africa, which you don't necessarily want users to do if you're talking about Walkerville. So what I'm going to do is zoom out, and I am going to scoot over here to where I want to be, and I'm going to zoom in to the Windsor area, even a little further. Okay, so this isn't bad. This is a reasonable um, starting point. So if someone were to be looking uh, at my map, uh, this is not a bad place for them to look. Actually, I should shift it over a little bit. There we go. Sorry. So roughly, I'm going to look at this neighborhood right here. Now, if I want to save that, I go to Styles. And I'm going to click Use Current Viewpoint as Default. And I'm going to save that. And so now, when I open up the map or someone comes to look at it, they're not going to start at Africa. They're going to start here in Walkerville as a, the base. So that's good. Now um, I want to add things to my map. And what I'm doing when I do this is all those items that you worked hard to add to your collection, you can uh, just put them on the map now if you wanted to. Uh, you don't have to. If you don't actually want to put the items on the map, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute, but that's usually a pretty good place to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on records, and I'm going to create a new one. So it, and every time you create a new record, it's like creating a new point on the map or a new spot on the map that you're going to talk about. And I'm going to look at my items here, and I'm going to say, let's see, I'll do the Hiram Walker bottling plant. So that's the first thing uh, I want to tackle. And you can see it goes and pulls the preview of the item from Omika that I've already worked to put into the system. So I'm going to save that. And now what I want to do is actually place this somewhere. So where uh, is where does this go? So let's move a little bit here. And we can see, as I zoom in closer to Riverside here, that we've got higher walkers. And uh, I'm going to go to my map button here. And now I have an option. Uh, I can draw a point, I can draw a line, a polygon. There are different things that I can do. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. and I'm going to add a point to the map. And I'm just going to choose to click where I want to have it. So 
Uh, in this case, I'm going to say, let's just plunk it down right over here. Now, I'm not saying that this is necessarily accurate for where this historic iron walker bottling plant is, um, but just for the purpose of showing you how this works, that's where I'm going to plug it down. And uh, another thing, I'm going to save that first. So remembering always to save frequently. Uh, I can also adjust how this looks a little bit. So I can change the color from blue to something else. Um, I can change the outline from black to something else. And I can even change how see-through or not it is, which doesn't really matter in this particular case. But um, So I'm just going to leave the options at default for now. OK, so I've got an item right uh, that I've added here to the map and I may want to say something about it and reference it so the slug again that's just the brief URL so uh, let's call it bottling and there's some brief, brief text and you can fill in more information if you want to say something more significant um, I'm just doing hello for brevity and I'm going to save that okay so I have that's all there is to it. So I've got a point added to the map. When I hover over it, you can see it says Hiram Walker Bottling Plant. And if I click on it, it actually shows me the item in Omika with my very brief description. But of course, you may want to say a little bit more. And you can actually jump to Omika with this link to look at it. OK, so I'm going to hit X because I'm done with this particular item. And imagine, oh, there it is, I want to create another record on my map. So I'm going to click New Record, and this time I'm going to look for St. Mary's Church. So you can see it's right over here. So I'm going to save that, and I want to add it to the map. But this time, instead of just putting a point in, um, I want to actually highlight this whole block, right? Because there's the church here, there's a uh, cemetery, and some uh, grounds. So I want to highlight this whole area. And often that might be more interesting for you. Suppose if there's a park you're talking about or a whole neighborhood or something like that, you might not just want to point. So I'm going to draw a polygon instead. In order to draw it, you just click for each point uh, in the corner of the polygon. So I'm going to click one here and drag it over here and then over here and then up here. And when I'm done, I just double click. Boom. boom. So now instead of a simple point, I've got this whole thing highlighted for where St. Mary's is. So let's save that. Um, style, let's change it. I'm going to do just for the sake of uh, something different. Let's do that. And, and then I'm going to save that. OK. So I've got two points on my map now. And I should go back here and fill this out. So St. Mary's. And hello. It's all saved. So again, now I can, this whole content area, I can hover over at St. Mary's Church and it will pull up that, that information for me. Now imagine um, I want to add some more information to this map. So suppose, um, you know, I want to give someone information about a walking tour. So uh, you start at the Hiram Walk, uh, Walker plant and you want to wander over to St. Mary's Gates. Uh, maybe there's an interesting route that they can take that I want to mark out on my map. Uh, so I can do that um, by creating another new record. So the path that I'm going to create is itself going to be a record. Now, it's not going to be related to an item in my collection because it's just a new path that I'm identifying. And I'm going to draw this on the map. So I'm going to call it path. And save that. And then instead of going to item, I'm just going to go to map. And then this time, I'm going to draw a line instead of a point or a polygon. And the line is going to start over here at Hiram Walkers. And it's going to say, OK, you should walk over here, and then you should go down Wyandotte, and then walk down Argyle, and then over to St. Mary's. So if you're doing a little walk or two, walking tour, um, you can do uh, that's the path that you should take. You can actually, let's save that now. And let's add some text to it. So let's say. Uh, oops, I've already done that, sorry. Let's change the style of it. So instead of this thin dark line, um, I'm going to do a red line. You can see that change the color of it. 
Uh, and I am going to change the width so it stands out a little bit more. So right now it's at two, so let's do let's do five. You can see that that got much thicker and easier to see because I want people to see the route. And I'm going to save it. And now you can see that uh, when I hover over the path, it says path, and I click on it, it says hello. Um, and uh, that can give more information, obviously, if there's something significant about things to look out for along the way or why these streets might be interesting. Uh, but that's another way of adding content to your Neatline map. All right, so I'm going to close that out. So I've got three things. I've got a path. I've got St. Mary's Church. I've got the Hiram Walker bottling plant. And uh, people can look at these uh, on the map and interact with them this way. I'm going to go back. Since all this is saved, I'm going to go back to Omika. And then I can view um, the public view of this site. So if I click that, you can see what this map is going to look like for someone who lands on, this, on it. So here we are. I zoomed out a little bit there. So you can see uh, someone on the site now can sort of interact with my exhibit uh, geospatially by the little points and things I've added. And there's the path. And I can look at this in full screen instead of just um, in that little tiny window. All right. So that's pretty much all there is to Neatline. And uh, if you have any questions about it, as always, feel free to drop me a line.